Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by AG1. Unlike a routine involving pills, gummies, powders, and everything else in between, AG1 makes it easy. One daily scoop provides comprehensive support for your brain, gut, and immune systems. Let me just show you how easy it is. We'll toss a little bit of water in here, you know. Then we'll grab a scoop of good old AG1 right here. Boom, just like that, that easy. Now I like to use pressurized air to mix my AG1. There we go. Yep. Really mixes it well. Then you might want to shake it a couple times. <laughs> then what I do is just drink it on my drive into work. It's that easy. I've tried a lot of drinks like AG1. Definitely tastes the best. I was feeling bloated. My digestion was just a little bit slow. AG1 kicks everything into high gear, including my energy, because I hate bogging down in the afternoons after lunch. This stuff keeps me going. If you find yourself really relying on energy drinks, I think you'll be shocked at how AG1 can just completely remove energy drinks from the picture for you. Guys, if you got gaps in your diet, it's really time to check out AG1. It's so easy to use and it can really make you healthier. Go to drinkag1.com slash Cletus to get started on your order. AG1 is giving my community a free bottle of vitamin D and K and five free AG1 travel pack. Link is in the description below. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Let's get to the live action. Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fun YouTube channel. Oh my God. You gotta rev her up when she's cold or it won't run. Well, she has definitely sounded better. Oh, track hog pulling in the shop. Oh! Dude, you guys thought we were leaving it stock? Get the hell out of here. All right, guys, we're gonna go over the track here in a minute, but we're gonna show you what we got for the track hog because you guys know we're giving away this track hog in 20 grand cash. Oh, lots of boxes of goodies. But we gotta make it better. Ran an 1160 in Maryland. Let me show you some of the parts we got before we put them on the, the track hawk and go back to the drag strip. And if you're looking for ways to enter, you know, every five bucks you spend on cleatsmcfarland.com gets you an entry. And we got some nice stocking stuffers here. We got the new Cletus uh, Christmas ornament, pretty sweet. We have some youth snapbacks. I think everyone's been wanting some youth stuff. So we got those snapbacks. Here's just a random t-shirt with mullet on it. This tree ain't seasonal, you know the deal. Oh, brand new, Tervis Cletus Cups. That's kind of cool. And then we got the Cletus 2024 calendar out here. You know the deal. Dale truck, your boy mullet. There's a bunch of cool stuff in this. So check that all out. Every five bucks, guys, gets you an entry for the track hawk. All right, so we'll fire off with this killer performance box. That's probably gonna pep up the track hawk the most. Our buddy Justin from Streetcar Takeover has a shop and he does track hawk stuff all the time. So that's who we went to for all this stuff to decide how to do the build. Cause we don't want to overpower the, uh, stock you know drivetrain and engine where street cars go to party we got some killer performance merch oh look at this dude injectors from fuel injector Ooh. clinic same ones we run on all our cars green belt dude gotta have a green supercharger belt this is for smaller pulley okay here we go smaller pulley dude hellcat Ooh, grip tech oh we got the, is it a grip tech pulley dude dude it's good stuff that's what we had on the f-150 yeah that's a big dog well big dog width wise Small dog, all the boots, <laughs> diameter wise. Then we got, okay, HP tuner so we can tune this and we'll leave this with you guys so you can change the tune out on the Trackhawk because we're gonna have an E85 tune if you wanna run corn fuel and then you can put it on pump gas however you wanna do it and we'll supply you everything you need and you know contact at Killer Performance so you can you know be dialed in. And then we got, ooh, Iridium spark plug, some nice NGKs, these suckers are expensive. All 16 oh, of them. Spare set. Oh, it's a Hemi. All 16, 16 of them. <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm like, spare set of plugs. Never mind. It's got 16 plugs. In here, we have a set of lowering springs because Ooh. we want to get the track hawk a little bit lower than she is now. Pop that off. Ooh, big oh, yeah. dogs, dude. So this is apparently the best set of lowering springs out there. That's what all the track hawk guys were telling me. I mean, I'm talking to all the track hawk people I can find. Big box, now, medium box, what's it gonna be, brother? I wanna save this one for last because it has some really unique stuff in it. Let's go to this G-Force box. You guys already, you see the brand on this. We got a Ooh. set of G-Force axles for this truck because apparently the axles are a weak link in this. I don't want you guys launching whooping some kid in a squatted truck and blowing an axle. We can't <laughs> risk that, you know what I'm saying? We just can't. 
The Trackhawks just have such an aggressive weight transfer. I think that they hook so hard in the back. People were like, yeah, get a set of rear axles so you don't end up breaking an axle because then sometimes that breaks the rear diff. That's a dog right there, dude. All right, these are the same axles that we ran in Leroy, G-Force axles, for years. I would honestly go to say that these are probably unbreakable. You know, I, I'm not warrantying that, but we never, ever broke a G-Force axle with Leroy going seven. So I imagine these are well-built enough for this track hawk to go low tens. Those are beefy, dude. Look at the stub on this unit. So that's what I'm talking about, dude. Thanks, G-Force. All right, this is a very exciting box right here. When you lower a track hawk, things get a little weird, I guess, with geometry, you know, things like that. And then also, track hawks like to wheel hop. So the guys at AAD have put together a package for us. It's gonna get rid of wheel hop and make sure that uh, we can actually align this thing properly and not just wear out tires and have a bunch of camber in the back. All right, AAD performance here. Let's see what we got. Oh wow, a lot more boxes. I think this is part of the sway bar. These might be the end links for it. Ooh, ooh, red and blue. Dude. Those are Jeez. sick. All right, sway bar end links. Nice billet links. Choo. I'm liking what I'm seeing from the boys at AAD. These are the toe links. Look nice. at the look at the beef on these. Oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Ooh. With the flag on it, dude. All right, so billet toe links, so nothing can, you know, toe in where it shouldn't. Wait too. Ooh. More billet. Ooh. Oh yeah. Stars and stripes, Let's brother. Let's go, dude. <laughs> AAD went above and beyond. Guys, keep in mind, this is just the first AAD box. There's multiples. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh I don't even know what this is. Oh. Oh, it's a pole. Whoa. That's an idler. idler. That's an, one of the idlers. Dude, it's got the stars and stripes Damn, as well. Damn, look at this, dude. <laughs> How do you even anodize like this? I've never seen this before in my life. This is a billet auxiliary blower idler pulley. I mean, I... Brother, what I say, best of the best parts. And that's just too clean, dude. That's sick. Second AAD performance box. We got koozies. We got t-shirts. But we got a whole bunch of parts. Whoa, shims and stuff? Okay, so this is for oh. alignment purposes. Dude, that's, you won't be missing anything. <laughs> that's legit. In this one, we have front upper control arms. Dang, dude. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Holy oh, crap! See how light that is. Feel it, oh baby. Oh my gosh, that's so sick. Wow, dude. Holy crap, look at that ball joint. Golly. Dude, that's crazy. It's sandwiched in there. These are some impressive parts. Wow. The track hawk is getting like, this is the stuff that guys do when they want to run eights in their track hawk. This is... <laughs> The best stuff you can get, dude. This is some nice equipment right here. Fire me up. With and the I, cleanest anodize I've ever seen. Yeah, I am shocked by that. Oh, here we go. We got the other one, dude. That's the most insane upper control arm I've ever seen. That is so sick. I'm worried as to what could be next. All right, so now I'm getting, you know, what they're saying that are like, this is, you know, this is really gonna help with wheel hop. I didn't realize we're replacing a lot of stuff. This is gonna <laughs> Basically make, all of it. This is gonna make a huge difference. Rear upper control arms, come on. Oh yeah, those are big. Let's see what we got. Golly, <laughs> this is so sick. Holy crap, it's so thick. Damn, I mean, that is huge. This is some race car stuff right here. Oh, 100%, Feel this. dude. Feel this. That it's is so light. Beefy. I mean, sadly, you won't see this much. It's so beautiful, but it's going to be underneath or behind the wheels. Dude, that just made the table look a lot yeah. cooler. <laughs> AAD performance, setting up the giveaway track hawk with insane parts. This is so cool, man. Hell yeah. Last but not least, I got a diff brace for the back diff. Uh -huh. They say, you know, at our horsepower level, you just run a rear diff brace, it bolts in. So, you know, another billet item on the list. And this baby is thick. So this bolts somehow up to the rear diff and then to the rear cradle to make sure that diff doesn't twist too much back there and break. So we're just trying to 
check all the boxes so whoever wins this can you know really rip on it and hopefully not have any issues enough talking about the track hawk giveaway you guys already know the deal track hawk 20 grand cash every five bucks spend on cleesmcfron.com a hat like this or any of our t-shirts whatever five bucks you spend it one entry buy a t-shirt that's five entries and there's a ton of great stuff on cleesmcfron.com but right now we're gonna head over to the freedom factory and check out all the damage we've got because uh it's looking rough over there Here's another one coming. Yeah. Let's go! Look at this! Hey. Oh, Excalibur do a little burnout for us. Huh. Oh, damn! That's some serious crash damage. Oh, my goodness! I don't know if I like that guy anymore, but it was still cool. Pistrana is driving the wheel side. Here we go, we've got two jumps coming. Jump. Let's go. Oh! oh my. That's, that's a really big jump. Okay. 129 feet from the minivan. Drivers out, drivers out. We're good. Yee! Here we go. On your feet, put your hands together. Here it is at the Freedom Factory. Yep. Tom, can I get a let's go? Let's go! We had the most people I've seen in the Freedom Factory in years. Since the first Freedom 500 where we sold out, we had the most people. And you're probably all wondering, did we sell out? Well, look at this picture. The cars were parked to here. Freedom Factory, way down there. So our new Culver was very clutch. But you guys are probably all wondering, did we sell out? I'm not gonna consider it a sell out because we were probably 97% capacity, but we never had to shut the doors. So. We utilized a new layout where we had more people in the back than we've ever done before. And we had probably the most people we've ever had on property before, but we did not have to shut the doors. So I'd say 97% capacity, but not a sellout. But here's one thing I can guarantee you. We're selling this thing out on April 5th, which is actually my birthday. And that's the date of the Freedom 500 in 2024. And I'm guaranteeing it to be the best show the Cleesman Frog brand has ever put on, which that's what this show was this weekend. The best show we've ever put on, period. Now we had some pay-per-view issues and that sucked. But if you saw the video on the Cleese 2 channel about that, you could hear about what happened. Everything else though, like in person, it was the best show we've ever put on by far. No one did donuts in my field, which I'm really happy <laughs> about. There's literally not even that much trash everywhere. You guys are the best. Everyone who comes to the track just does such a good job cleaning it up for us. It's insane. The track's in good shape. However, the grass 
took a, a real hard hit this weekend. I mean, George, have you ever seen anything like that? No, that was a lot of grass going in the air. That was, that was bad. Monster truck jump is staying because we have tour destruction in December and we're probably gonna use it again. But uh, the grass is so bad, we're kind of like scrambling to fix it because we have a huge race this weekend. We have the big lead circle track race. We have like 40 late models racing this weekend. So we're kind of scrambling to get pallets of grass to fix the infield. Burnout cars everywhere, by the way, an Australian won the burnout competition. So that was cool. And uh, Lucifer is actually staying, the car he was driving is staying here. So we have it in the building right now. And then he'll be back in April. Crown Vic wise, we're doing really good. Literally everything we're doing really good except the grass. <laughs> <laughs> the grass took a beating. I mean, just right here took a beating from the 2.4 hours of late mullets because all the drivers are cutting through the grass. Even I had to cut through the grass because when you're three wide through the kidney bean, sometimes you just end up in the grass. So you can see the grass is pretty beat over here, but the majority of the damage, my friends, is over here. Now, to, to be fair, the grass has been taking a beating over the years. It kind of needs a refresh. So probably after tour destruction, the end of the year, we'll, we'll really fix it up. Oh, oh gosh. Geez. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> Not good, dude. Not good. Middle tires. I was looking at my grass and I was just like, <laughs> man. So one of the monster trucks started doing some donuts right here. Looked a lot worse when it was all spread out, but it's not that bad. They definitely fixed it up. Oh yeah. I mean, not I even bad, dude. I don't think we even got a sprinkler head knocked off. I mean, I think we're dialed in pretty good. So to put it in perspective, guys, a pallet of grass is like 150 bucks. It's really not that big of a deal. However, we're gonna have to regrade it because then the lawnmower is gonna be like freaking crazy. But we didn't knock out any irrigation. I did tell the monster truck guys they could have at it in the grass, you know, ripping around. But uh, I didn't think he'd do donuts in it. I'm and not gonna lie, I loved seeing him just tear up the three beautiful perfect. It was kind of awesome. <laughs> it was so awesome. That's what I said on the live stream. Like that was insane. So Nick came up to me after, who was driving uh, Kraken, who did the donuts. He's like, "I'm so sorry." I'm like, "Bro, the crowd went insane." I was like, "100 percent <laughs> worth it." So we're talking like a couple hundred dollars in grass to repair this. It's not the end of the world at all. I don't want anyone too upset about it. Alan, lawn care nut, he can be upset about it. But everyone else, don't worry about it. We're done. So, as far as track goes, this is the worst damage. We also got into it over here a little bit. That's not a big deal. Nothing Screw too that. crazy. Screw that. Whatever. Burnout pad? Looking good. A lot of extra rubber on it. Yeah. Can I take a moment to shout out 316 speed? Our burnout pad, three years now, just ripping still. Third season complete. And now it's like a racetrack service. Pretty soon we don't even have to go to the drag strip. We got our own right here. Look at this. <laughs> Make our 330 hits. I mean, this rubber is thick, dude. Oh, yeah. You just cut it with your yeah. fingernail. How you doing? Good. That looks good. I mean, minus our grass situation. That's not a big deal. How's the bathrooms and all that hold up? I mean, solid. Really? Yeah. Dialed. This place is dialed in. We're ready to go. Let me tell you one thing. If you're a female and you're afraid of racetracks because the bathrooms suck, which they always suck at most tracks, not here. Not here. You come here. And we have clean bathrooms, we have bathroom attendants. We make it dialed in for you, so. Definitely got here. compliments on the bathrooms. We did. A lot of race car guys or, you know, the racers, their, their wives were like, cleanest bathrooms they've been to in years. And they've been to some big spots, so. Cause that's the Freedom Factory. Honestly, my mom came and she was like, we're not gonna have <laughs> dirty bathrooms ever at this track. Like right when I bought it. And I was like, I like that. So thanks, shout out to my mom for, uh, Kind of motivating us to always have super clean bathrooms. Other than that, looks good down here. We got any damage track wise? No, no, no. Even with that monster minivan jump. It did, oh, it the did minivan jump. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He put a scratch on the down He the put pavement. a scratch on the track. Let's go look at that. Look at the guys out here just making it happen. Okay, we did also damage the grass over here. We had to put the bleachers in and the lull Ooh. put some ruts in. So. Some soft grass, you know? It is just so soft and luscious. It's a little vulnerable. This has also got beat up. Not a huge deal. Like I said, guys, the grass, very repairable. One summer here with a bunch of rain and the grass just comes back. It ain't no big deal. So we had a 130 foot minivan jump that landed uh, all the way right there, right? up here. Yeah, all the way up here. The jump was back by that yellow X and he aired it out and he landed up here. So that's the frame. 
<laughs> really aired it out. I mean, we're talking 130 feet. One of the most impressive things I've seen in my life. Dude, it was high as the catch fence. Yeah. Oh, literally as high insane. as the catch fence. But the Freedom Factory is built like a brick house, dude. There's 50 years of asphalt layered underneath that puppy. <laughs> so she said, no big deal. Another reason why I'm glad I never totally resurfaced the track, you know? I would always be like cringing if we, you know, did stuff like this. But the track's been great, man. Everyone's like, you gotta resurface it. We patched it up. Sucker rips, dude. Pave Masters just did that corner and fixed some stuff up. Track is amazing. It's really the best it's ever been, and I didn't spend two million dollars trying to do that. So, really happy with how the track turned out. Really happy with how everything turned out. However, we should probably go take a look at Rodney. Rod knock Rodney had a bath. She got hot. She she got hot. Let's go take a look. Where's old Rodney at? Right there. Oh, right here. As far as they can push it. <laughs> the neighbor's uh, secondary chain guys got eaten up a little bit oh. over the weekend. That kind of sucks. So we okay. got to pull the front cover on neighbor. Not a big deal. Pace car was legit. Yeah. Toast is good. Killer B is good. I got stuck in the wall. James got stuck in the wall. So that sucked because I wanted to beat the Australian. But Rod knock Rodney reached temperatures never seen before by any scientists in the world. <laughs> <laughs> temperatures unheard of. I mean, just look at the temperature that this master yeah. saw, saw. I mean, Dude, it rusted so much. It. It was so hot it knocked the rust off. Oh, it looks brand new again. I think it knocked a whole layer of metal off. Yeah, I think happened. you're right. <laughs> I don't know where the fire came from, but everywhere. Oh, my fire. breather tube just melted completely out. Oh, yeah, yeah, you'll get that. that you makes it runs. Sense. I I will bet it runs. I'll bet the battery's dead actually. Oh yeah, the hose came out of my catch can. Well, yeah, it's not really a catch can, but just a dump. Tube. It's a dump tube, yeah, for sure. Oh, that's all it was, just a little oil fire. Nothing to worry about there. We well, did have a gnarly fire that, uh, yeah, played. that one. That was good. Fans work. Not that they were doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, she's a unit. <laughs> you gotta rev her up when she's cold, or it won't run. Well, she has definitely sounded better. Yeah, I told you. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. She's still good. <laughs> yeah, dude. Unreal, George. People don't know I'm the greatest engine builder on planet Earth. Only right. junkyard parts. <laughs> well, squeaky. Dude, if I would have had a motion catch can, we would have been good. She's dialed. And even ready? Doesn't, doesn't need anything. It's ready for April. <laughs> Park it until April. Park it until April. <laughs> Maybe says spark plugs. No oil change though. For no, sure. for sure not. We might have to add some though. I gotta say, I'm shocked. Actually, I'm not shocked. <laughs> it is not rod knocking. I mean, that thing sounds is not. just as good as it did the other day when you drove it over here. Yeah, honestly, a little better. Just had to Probably knock a little dirt. Her out a little yeah, bit. Exactly. You know what I mean? Kill a bee. Just got tangled up in the smoke, huh? Yeah. So she's still dialed, yeah, running great. So as far as Crown Vicks go, racing Crown Vicks, we had essentially the fastest field we've ever had for the 2.4 hours late mullets layout. I don't know if the cars are just getting faster as they get used. They, they always look good when we go out. They're looking a little beat up right now. Here's a winning car on the front. And uh, here's Cowboy Strone's car. I think he rear-ended somebody. <laughs> Happens, dude. Whatever. But uh, we only had one car fall out of the race for a mechanical failure which BJ Baldwin's engine locked up. Every single other car that was knocked out of the race was from a crash. So I got to give a big shout out to Dave and all the boys who worked on the Crown Vicks to get them ready. That's the best success rate we've ever had. We had a full field until about 10 minutes or 15 minutes to go in the race. So 
super pumped about that man like we worked so hard to get these cars better and better every race after bristol which was really a disaster as far as car you know reliability went i'm feeling really good after this race so really proud of the team there and just the whole freedom factory crew killed it this weekend we had the pay-per-view issues that's definitely tough we're dealing with that and we're definitely gonna repay you guys make it right like i showed in the cleas 2 video that was a bummer but other than that an amazing weekend i promise you april 5th and 6th sold out guaranteed but this weekend with the monster trucks and the fireworks it was a massive step in the right direction for everything we're doing and i'm just really proud of that so thank you guys for tuning in and uh, we'll get the track fixed up but that's it for now thanks for watching do it for dale we'll freaking see you later